Team number two. Jefferson! And from Jefferson, team number three. Jefferson! Jefferson! For the 23rd consecutive year, Emmy Award-winning Academic Challenge. Brought to you by The Illuminating Company and by Ohio Edison. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Don Webster. Thank you very much, and welcome to Academic Challenge, where teams test their wits against each other and try their luck with our electronic challenge board. And now, teams, listen carefully as Paul lists tonight's categories. Thanks, Don. The categories in our first electronic challenge round will be history, literature, math, sports, energy, trivia, Ohio, what's missing, and the right number. Now listen closely as Paul explains the rules for the opening round. In this round, each team will have six questions, and each correct answer earns ten points. No penalties in this round. Thank you, Paul. Let's go now to Cardinal Mooney in Youngstown and meet Winslow Warren, Michael Planey, and James Tomachek. Nice to have you fellas with us today. And uh, it's time to get underway, so Michael, anytime you're ready, push the stop button. We'll find out what the first category is going to be. And as Michael pushes the button, we end up with uh, what's missing. Okay, first round underway. Faith and charity are two of the three virtues discussed in the book of Corinthians. Which one is missing? Hope. Hope. Stalin and Roosevelt were two of the big three leaders who met at the 1945 Yalta Conference, who was the third who represented England. Churchill. That's it. Mercury and Venus are the names of two of the three planets closest to the sun. Omitted is what planet whose orbit is in the third position? What is Earth? Earth is right. Africa and West Indies were two of the three areas involved in the three-cornered trade of slaves, molasses, and rum. Name a third area comprised of six states in the northeastern United States. Is New England? What's that? New England. New England, is it? John Jay and John Adams were two of the three American commissioners sent to Paris in 1782 to negotiate peace terms after the Revolution. Name the third who was not a John, but a Ben. Benjamin Franklin. Mm -hmm. Grand Canyon State and Sunset State are two of the three nicknames bestowed on Arizona. What is a third taken from the name of the American Indian tribe with such leaders as Cochise and Geronimo? Apache. Apache is absolutely right. You got them all. 60 points for Cardinal Moore. Now let's go over to team number two. John Marshall, Howard Griffith, Winston Bell, and James Purnell. And Winston, your turn now to push that button and find out which category it's going to be. And we come up with trivia. Okay. You'd better think twice before you ask for a dish of macaroni in Antarctica, because macaroni is also a species of what flightless birds native to that region? Penguin. Right. There are still mine-sweeping ships, but no longer in use is a 1940s mine-sweeping tank named for what poisonous arachnid found in the Zodiac? Scorpion. That's right. Many historians believe that Y Island in Maryland was a place American colonists first grew what grain crop that is threshed to separate the chaff. Wheat. Wheat is it. The ancient Juvenal once said that when Romans desired only two things, bread and what form of entertainment, such as that provided in this country by P.T. Barnum? Circus. Right. Joseph had a coat of many colors, but the coat devised by Thomas Burberry for troops in the First World War was named for what sort of dugout ditches in which those troops fought? Trench. Right. A Suffolk punch is not an example of fisticuffs, but rather a large working breed of what animal whose similar varieties include Clydesdales? Horse. Right, and you got them all, too. Good start for uh, John Marshall. Yeah! Six now we go over to team number three from Jefferson, Kelly Anderson, Brian Jackson, and Todd Oldbrick. And Brian, your turn now to make a selection. We'll find out what the category is going to be. And as you uh, push the button, we end up with questions on math. The sum of two complementary angles is how many degrees? 90. Right. A square has an area of eight. What is the length of a diagonal of this square? Four times the square root of two. <laughs> well, just give me a number, if you will. Um, pass. Okay, just a, a four. 
What is the product of a number and its multiplicative inverse? One. One is right. If a person with a $9,000 income gives $450 to charity, what percent of his income is spent for this purpose? Five. Right. What is the only even prime number? Two. Right. If gasoline is 80 cents a gallon, how many gallons can you purchase for $4? Five. Five is right. And you just about got them all. A good start for Jefferson with 50 points after the yeah. first one. We'll be back with our very fast lightning round, but first of all, teams, remember at the end of tonight's match, we'll check the ladder on our Super Bowl scoreboard. At the end of the season, the three teams with a top score will join, join us for an Academic Challenge Super Bowl. Now, so far, the highest point totals have been these. We have Western Reserve in third place with 495 points, Lakeview 535, University Schools still in the lead with 655. We'll be back after this for Ohio Edison and the Illuminating Company. The energy makers bring you the power of the future. Before we continue with more questions, let's have a look at tonight's schools on Academic Challenge. Cardinal Mooney High School is one of six high schools operated by the Roman Catholic Diocese of Youngstown. It serves more than 750 students from the south side of the city, Boardman, Canfield, Struthers, and Southern Mahoning County. Diane Mastro-Nard, the school's forensic coach and English teacher, is now in her fifth year as Academic Challenge advisor. She tells us Cardinal Mooney is dedicated to developing each student to his fullest potential, and the school's 36 classrooms include fully equipped laboratories for physics, chemistry, biology, and basic science. Cleveland's John Marshall High School is designated the Honor Center for the Kennedy Marshall Cluster. Under a $20,000 grant, the school is upgrading its computer program to improve the research abilities of its students. Academic Challenge Advisor Robert Vineyard is the internal suspension room instructor. He tells us the school got a big lift earlier this year when the football team earned the South Senate Championship for the first time in 25 years. Jefferson High School was a, has a unique academic boosters program to support scholastic achievers. It sponsors an awards assembly and gives out letters for good grades, just as athletic boosters do for the top athletes. Academic Challenge Advisor John Patterson said the boosters even sponsor a quiz bowl for junior high students. The school offers four levels of woodworking instruction as well as four years of vocational agriculture. Now it is time for the lightning round. So, Paul, what are the rules? All three teams will compete in a visual free-for-all lasting one minute. The first team to ring its bell for each item will be recognized. The right answer gets you ten points, but we'll take away ten for incorrect answers or failure to reply. Well, now's the time to be brave because this category is all, all about fear and terror and being frightened. Fingers on the buzzers, check your monitor, and identify the following. He wrote, I fear thee, ancient mariner. Jefferson. Who is Coleridge? Right. Uh, number two, a nursery rhyme character frightened by a spider. Who are we looking for, Jefferson? Little Miss Muffet. That's the one. Cape Fear is in this Tar Heel state. Cardinal Mooney. What is North Carolina? Right. Rates were the great fear of hero. All right. Winston. Jefferson. I'm sorry. Winston. No, we needed 1984. All right, claustrophobia is fear of this. Cardinal Mooney. Closed in spaces. All right. According to Pope, they rush in where angels fear to tread. John Marshall. Wise men. Nope. Fools. I, I, I'm sorry, I had to take the first one. Uh, fools was correct, but too late. Captain Hook was afraid of this reptile. Uh, Jefferson. Alligators. Crocodile. 
Well, the buzzer's down now. He wrote with hope, farewell, fear in Paradise Lost. Milton. Jefferson. Milton. Milton is right. I will fear no evils from this psalm. Jefferson. What is the 23rd psalm? Uh-huh. President who said, all we have to fear is... Jefferson, you're in at the buzzer. Um, Roosevelt Franklin. Yes, FDR is right. That's the end of the round. Remember now, at the end of the season, the three teams with the highest scores will be back to compete with each other for some very impressive prizes. The top three teams at the end of the season will each receive a computer. Computer prizes are provided by Apple Computer Incorporated and Holcomb's Educational Materials. Today, there are more apples in schools than any other computer, which may be just the best reason to buy an apple for home. There may never be a better time. In addition to their Apple computer, the winner of our Super Bowl program will also receive a very special championship trophy. We'll be back in a minute after this from the Energy Makers. Sure been quiet lately, PJ. Uh, you've been thinking about electricity again. Huh? Want to wire up the bunkhouse, don't you? Get a TV. Most of us don't have to give electricity a second thought. It's always ready when we need it. Just a few dollars a day to do everything. Or even an electric blanket. Ha, <laughs> oh, boy. For him and his pony. Ha, <laughs> ha, boy. Oh, oh. No, 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 PJ, don't. In 23 years, Academic Challenge has seen some of Northern Ohio's finest students come and go. But where have they gone? Let's see. Jamie Potts Wolf took the challenge in 1978. A graduate of Harvard, Jamie is married and happily raising her two children in Salem, Massachusetts. Dave Mascara took the challenge in 1979. With a master's degree from the University of Michigan, Dave is a development engineer with General Motors. The illuminating company and Ohio Edison applaud the scholars of yesterday and today because education, like electricity, is the power of the future. Let's recap what the lightning round did for the scores of the teams, and then it's back to our electronic challenge board. Paul? In this round, each question is worth 20 points. But now you may also lose 20 points for incorrect answers or 10 points for failure to reply. Any team answering all eight questions correctly will gain 25 bonus points. The categories in this electronic challenge round will be history, literature, says who, Science, Associations, Potluck, Famous Men and Women, Where in the World, and Letter Perfect. All right, back now to team number one. Michael uh, from Cardinal Mooney, you have 80 points going into the round. And as you did with uh, round number one, just push the stop button anytime you're ready now. Okay, we come up with associations. And uh, associations can be uh, just about anything, really. It's going to be an interesting set of questions. Iguana and Gila Monster are reptiles that fall into what same category that would be leaping in the vocabulary of Little Orphan Annie? Lizards. Mm -hmm. A visit to which of our states would yield major sightseeing attractions as Zion National Park and the Great Salt Lake? Utah. Utah is it. With what bound and unbound character of Greek legend do you associate chains, fire, and an eagle? He reputedly brought fire to man. Prometheus. That's the one. Avocado and chocolate are words that come to us from what Indian civilization destroyed by Cortez? Inca. No, Aztec. Nine pins and a hunting rifle are items associated with what fictional character of Washington Irving's who slept for 20 years? Rip Van Winkle. That's the one. Peen claw and handle are parts of what magical weapon that the Norse god Thor wielded in his thunderous abode? His hammer. His hammer. What daughter of a French plowman was associated with voices across in the city of Rouen? Called the Maid of Orleans, she led armies and was burned at the stake during the Hundred Years' War. Joan of Arc. Right. Calpe and Jebel Tarek are early names for what stronghold at the tip of Spain, now held by the British and called by what name? Gibraltar. Gibraltar is right. Good round for Cardinal Mooney. 200 points now after that round. <laughs> now we'll come back to team number two, John Marshall, Winston, once again. Anytime you are ready, let's find out what the category is going to be. And we end up with says who? And I think that pretty well speaks for itself. We're looking for names of people who said particular things. Uh, Never stop questioning is a paraphrase of a statement by what famous physicist whose own questioning led to his formulation of the theory of relativity? Einstein. Right. Eater of raw fish is the meaning of what name of natives of the Arctic often pictured with sled dogs and igloos? Eskimos. Okay. Both good and bad must be born in a lifetime comes from what great Anglo-Saxon epic about a hero killed by a dragon 
many years after he has triumphed over the monster Grendel. Beowulf? Right. Don't keep me waiting longer than necessary were reportedly the last words of what violent abolitionist executed for treason following his 1859 raid on Harper's Ferry. Brown. Right. America did not invent human rights. Human rights invented America, said what recent president in a 1981 farewell speech. Carter. Right. Andrew Carnegie had the line, let there be light, inscribed on what public buildings that he endowed for the American public? Libraries. Right. Quantity changes quality is an adage attributed to what German socialist who co-authored the Communist Manifesto with Karl Marx? Engels. Right. He shows neurotic Southerners in the last stages of self-destruction was a concise description of the plays written by what American dramatist whose works included The Glass Menagerie and Cat on a Hot Tin Roof? Need the answer. A name? Okay, it was Tennessee Williams. Too bad you missed it. You just missed the bonus, but you ended up with a good round. 190 points for John Marshall. Yeah. And we go back over to team number three now, Brian Jackson. Another selection from you, if you will, Brian. Anytime you're ready, we'll go with uh, associations. We've had associations, so we'll spin it one more time. Let's let it go around again. And uh, this time around, it is science. Okay, question's all about science. In chemistry, sublimation describes a process that may be observed at standard temperature and pressure for water, dry ice, or ether. Pass. Well, dry ice. The point in its orbit when the Earth is nearest the sun is called the equinox, perihelion, or tidal point. Equinox? Nope, perihelion. Every sugar is an aldehyde or a ketone. This means that in every sugar there has to be at least one double, triple, or quadruple bond. Pass. A uh, double bond. The two atoms, two atoms can have different atomic weights but have the same atomic number. These different forms are called isomers, isotopes, or ions. Isotopes. Right. A helium-filled balloon will not continue to rise indefinitely. Which of the following laws would account for the balloon bursting? Boyle's Law, Dalton's Law, or Faraday's Law? Boyle's Law. That's the one. There are 20 common amino acids. Among these is DNA, acetic acid, or glutamic acid. DNA? No, glutamic acid. Which of these would be regarded as the simplest? Blue-green algae, mosses, or ferns? Algae. That's it. The slightest bending of light rays around a sharp edge is known as reflection, diffraction, or absorption. Diffraction. Diffraction is right. That's the end of the round for Jefferson. And an even hundred points. <laughs> we'll be back with the time capsule round after this message from the Illuminating Company in Ohio. Yeah! electricity came. A day long awaited by millions of people just a few generations ago. They're here! Mom! It brought daylight to their nighttime, replaced the ice in ice boxes, and linked them to the whole world with an amazing invention called radio. And no matter what wonders American ingenuity brought to life, there was always electricity there to make it go. Now there's a microwave oven next to the icebox, VCRs for our TVs, computers in our homes, and satellites to tie our lives together. But one thing stays the same. Electricity is still the power that makes our world go. And we're working to make sure there'll always be enough. Electricity. It was the power of the future then, and still is today. Students appearing on tonight's show will receive a photograph of their team as they appear on the show and also a special Academic Challenge t-shirt. Welcome back to Academic Challenge. While we recap our team scores on your screen, Paul will explain the upcoming time capsule round. We now have a special round of two-part video questions. Each pair of questions is keyed to a clip from a historical newsreel. Teams will be in direct competition. 
Each part of the two-part question is worth 10 points, and there is a 10-point penalty for incorrect answers. Hold your buzzer down if you wish to answer. Well, we have a real tight game going, so let's get right to the first video. Here it is. The United Nations headquarters was built in Manhattan in the 1940s. That was after the first UN General Assembly had been convened in what world capital where the Palace of Westminster houses the most famous parliament? Uh, John Marshall? England. I need a city. London. London is right. The tall office building that rises above the circular General Assembly is a UN structure called by what name, which also identifies the S initial horse that won the Triple Crown in 1973? Cardinal Mooney. Secretariat? Secretariat is right. All right, let's have a look at our second video for the night. Wiley Post and Harold Gaddy had to stop for fuel many times when they flew around the world back in 1931. That was not the case in 1986 when what experimental plane flew Cardinal Mooney? Voyager. Voyager is right. Taking off from New York, the Post-Gaddy flight made two stops on U.S. territory. One stop was here in Cleveland. The other at what an initial town on the Seward Peninsula of Alaska. Cardinal Mooney? Gnome. Gnome is right. And here's our third and final video tonight. During the Vietnam War, the United States used these films to prove that the North Vietnamese were transporting weapons along what southeastern Asian trail named for the leader of the Hanoi government? John Marshall. Ho Chi Minh. That's it. And the second question, same video. The U.S. military force in South Vietnam was greatly increased in 1964 after Congress passed what supportive resolution named for the South, Southeast Asian Gulf where American ships were allegedly attacked? Jefferson. Gulf of Tonkin. That is it. And that is the end of the round. <laughs> we'll be back for our final grab bag round after this message for Ohio Edison and the Illuminati. Decisions, decisions. The world is full of them. Because the world is full of electronics. Helping us do our work. Making life easier. Warmer. Cooler. Brighter. Each button you push is like making a decision to use electricity. How much to use and what will it cost? The answers are in here. The electric decision maker. The decision maker lets you choose how much you want to spend doing each job. For instance, it tells you you can watch an hour of television for three cents and how much an hour of lighting costs. Or heating a room for two hours. Everything from air cleaners to walk pans. Even though it's only about $2 a day for an average house, you should know the exact cost of running your home better electrically. The Electric Decision Maker. A handy way to make better decisions. Write or call the electric company for your free copy. <laughs> Now the teams face their final competition as we move along to the grab bag. But first of all, let's recap the scores. And in third place is Jefferson, 110. In second place, John Marshall, 220 points. And in the lead, but barely, Cardinal Mooney, 230. In the grab bag, teams gain 20 points for each correct answer. Mr. Fail to answer, 20 points are deducted. Here we go, question number one. When Neil Armstrong reached the moon in 1969, he was part of what U.S. space mission named for a Greek god? Apollo. John Marshall. Apollo. Right. The protagonist of Crime and Punishment is quite intelligent, but Dostoevsky writes another novel whose title describes what sort of person of limited mental Jefferson? The idiot. That's the one. The longest entry in the U.S. edition of Who's Who, about 140 lines, was that of what engineer and futurist who had invented the geodesic dome? R. Buckminster Fuller. The African country of Zaire contains about 60% of the world's reserves of what metallic element whose atomic number is 27 and whose chemical symbol is CO? Cardinal Mooney. Cobalt. Cobalt. Cobalt is it. Bartholomew Fair is a play by Ben Johnson, but what other word did Thackeray place before Fair in his novel about Becky Sharp, Jefferson? Vanity. Right. On the 4th of July, 1898, Commander William Sampson offered President McKinley as a gift the wrecked fleet of what European nation then at war with the United States? Jefferson. Spain. Right. If a pole 50 feet high casts a shadow that is 30 feet long, how long is the shadow cast by a 15-foot pole? The answer is 9 feet. Man has about 700 muscles in his body, but over 2,000 stretch over the frame of what small furry insect that eventually becomes a butterfly? Jefferson. 
Caterpillar. That's it. If we classify Australia as the continent that is smallest in land area, which continent would be the second smallest? Cardinal Mooney. Antarctica. No, Europe. Everybody Comes to Rick's, a 1940 drama by Murray Burnett and Joan Allison was the basis of what Oscar-winning movie with Humphrey Bogart as Rick? Looking for Casablanca. If bananas are $1.60 a pound, how much is a bunch of bananas weighing 23 ounces? $2.30. Carl Vinson, long the chairman of the House Armed Services Committee, was a great uncle of what U.S. Senator from Georgia, who is now chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee. Stumped you all again. Sam Nunn. Great Lion of God, a best-selling novel by Taylor Caldwell, treats the life of which Christian saint whose name is immortalized by a famous London cathedral? John Marshall? John. No, nope, Paul, St. Paul. A salt which, when dropped into a Bunsen flame, colors the flame violet. It contains the metal potassium, calcium, or lithium. It's potassium. When they put them over your head, you just have to run them down, said what baseball outfielder who perfected the basket catch during many years with the Giants? Cardinal Mooney? Mooney Mays. Right. Cinderella's famous slipper was made of glass, but of what material were the stockings associated with the tails of James Fenimore Cooper? Jefferson. Leather. Is it. The first United States aircraft carrier was named for what 1777 New York battle that changed the tide in favor of the colonists? John Marshall. Saratoga. That's it. Although Andrew Jackson's friends were frequently rowdy, he gave his Tennessee estate what name implying quiet religious seclusion? Jefferson. Sanctuary. Uh, no, the Hermitage. In Shakespeare's time, a young boy dressed in a skirt betrayed what girl loved by Hamlet? Marshall? I'm sorry. Well, we were looking for Ophelia. Which of the following organisms uses a unique system of trachea for respiration? Lobster, bee, or earthworm? John Marshall. Lobster. Nope, bee. When Captain Cook sailed near Alaska in 1778, he spotted a high mountain that he gave what name, suggesting the fickle friends who will help you only when skies are clear? John Marshall at the buzzer. Farewell. Farewell. weather friend. All right, that's the end of the round and the end of the game. All right, let's check our scores now and uh, find out how we fared tonight. And in third place is Jefferson with 190 points. In second place, John Marshall, 220. And tonight's winner from Youngstown, Cardinal Mooney with 250 points. <laughs> now, let's take a look at our Super Bowl scoreboard and see if tonight's winner has a big enough score to uh, win a place for itself on the scoreboard. Well, you can see they did not. And this is the...